Truck System Technologies was founded in 2010, offering an affordable, reliable TPMS solution to an aftermarket and retrofit niche in the recreational vehicle market. In 2017, TST was acquired by Pressure Systems International. PSI is the global leader of automatic tire inflation systems for the commercial vehicle market for 18-wheelers as you know them. After the acquisition, PSI re-engineered TST's TPMS product to meet the grueling standards of the commercial vehicle market and also to meet the requirements to become an original equipment manufacturer or OEM factory installed component in the RV market. In early 2018, Forest River began testing TST's TPMS system and after over a year of scrutiny, TST received the approval stamp by Forest River and began talking to the various production lines within Forest River. TST is very proud to be the RV industry's first TPMS at the OEM level and is the only tire pressure monitoring system approved for use on OEM factory installation on every line at Forest River and Thor. TST, the RV industry's only standard OEM TPMS. So thank you again to Truck System Technologies, um, our sponsor for both March and April. So it is because of them and other sponsors like them that we are able to have these events. And with that, we're going to get started. So we have a very special guest today. So have you ever felt stuck? Do you, do you have a dream that lies dormant? Do you wish you could have more energy? If you answered yes, you're in the right place. If you answered no, you may be in denial. Our speaker today is Nicole Greer, and she is on a mission to energize, impact, and influence individuals to lead a more vibrant life through engaging what is possible and making it probable. She's a certified coach, an entrepreneur, and a race car driver. She races to work, she races to see her clients, races home to the love of her family, and tries not to be on first name basis with a state patrol. And she loves to the she and she loves the race to win in life and business. Please welcome Nicole Greer. Yes. All right. Good afternoon, ladies. I'm absolutely delighted to be here with you today. And I see several of you have your cameras on and several of you don't. So I'm imagining that you have a, like a nice sandwich in front of you or something like that. You don't want to see us. Uh, you don't want to show us you munching away, but I do have this idea today that in our lunch and learn that we would actually learn from each other, and I wanted to put everybody out into breakout groups at some point. So that means that you will be transported out of this main room into a breakout room, which is another little Zoom room. You don't do anything except the invitation. And when you get out there, you'll be able to turn on your camera and talk to somebody else who's in this wonderful alliance. So I'm wondering uh, how many of you are game, go down to the bottom of your Zoom screen and go to the reactions. Uh, and give me a green check mark if you are willing to go out to a breakout room today. I would love to uh, send you out to a breakout room. I've got two that are willing to go out and play that party game with me. Okay, let's see, Tony. Yeah, Tony, Peggy, Barthel will do it. All right, so I've got about four of you willing to play that party game. Okay, so I'm gonna send you guys out uh, into breakouts uh, at that point and you guys will get to know each other. So let's begin. I'm gonna start by sharing my screen. So I'm gonna open up my PowerPoint uh, and show this to you all. And so today we are going to talk about um, communicating and executing the vibrant vision with your team, okay? And so I just wanna make sure we're recording. Are we recording, Monica? We are? Okay, fantastic. Okay, so we're communicating and executing a vibrant vision with your team. Uh, this is how you can get a hold of me if you're interested. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, all those places, Facebook, and I would love to be hooked up with you so you can reach out and reach out to me. And here's my first concept that I want you all to think about today is that any organization is developing their people. And it's whether you're conscious of it or unconscious. So Peter Drucker, which is one of my favorite authors, he wrote in one of his books that an organization develops people. It either forms them 
or deforms them, right? So I can get up every morning as a leader and I can think about the people who are on my team and I can say, today is my day to help my people think in a certain way, achieve certain goals, develop themselves professionally, and I can form them and shape them into the people I need them to be to help me reach my vision. Or I can just let that whole process unfold, right? And so I really want you to get your heads wrapped around this, that the idea of a leader is to actually form people and move them towards the vision. And so this takes real intentionality, right? And so I want you all to be the ladies that really think about forming your teams. Now, the number one thing that we have to get into the thinking of the people that are on our teams is where are we going? Where is the company headed? Where, what, is, what are our goals? What are we doing here? Uh, it's not just their J-O-B or their job description that they are doing. It's so imperative that we understand that the work that we're doing is actually the work that develops the outcome called our vision, all right? So we want to think about forming people. So in this session, I've designed it to help you get clearer about your vision uh, the supporting communication required to make a vision become true. I'm going to use this language. It sounds a little weird sometimes when I say this, but we want to manifest the vision. All right. Is that too weird? Give me a thumbs up if it's uh, too weird and a th uh, or a thumbs up if it's not too weird or thumbs down if it's too weird. You can go down and you can do it in the, in the reactions. But I think I want to manifest, right, or create my own future. I don't just want to let it unfold because here's what I think. If you let life unfold, you're going to get a lot less than what is possible. Okay. So when Monica introduced me, she, she said my mission statement, which is Nicole's on a mission to uh, influence, energize, and impact people to take what is possible right? And the vision is possible and put strategy systems and smarts in place to make it probable. You know, I want to increase your chances of creating something fantastic, okay? So we want to get clear about that vision uh, and then what kind of communica communication it is required from the leader. Now, earlier I said we're either forming or deforming people. One of the greatest ways to form people into the humans we need to make the vision happen is we have to use our words. We have to communicate and communicate again and over communicate what needs to be done. So it is crystal clear where we're headed and what is required in that process. Now, in addition to that, We've got to have business acumen ourselves, and we don't have time for that in the one hour lunch and learn, but I would love to come back and talk about business acumen and how we need to put business acumen into everybody. I mean, all the way to the front line of your organization, people need to understand how business works. Uh, and then of course, we can execute it fully. So in essence, we're gonna explore what's possible and put in writing uh, strategy systems and smart to make the possible probable, okay? All right, so today we're gonna to visit the future, which is very exciting. I mean, I can't even tell you how excited I am about visiting the future. So we're gonna visit the future. You guys are gonna do this little exercise called the repeating question. And then we're gonna explore what are the obstacles in the way of your vision? Because here's what gets in the way of a good vision, an obstacle, okay? A problem, an issue, uh, something we can't get out of the way, you know, we're going to learn to move stuff out of the way. All right. And we're going to use those obstacles as raw material to formulate an executable strategy. So that's so juicy. And then we're going to prepare to hold others accountable because, because again, here's the thing. If I'm going to have a strategy for the future, I'm going to have a business plan. Uh, somebody's got to hold people accountable to getting this business plan done, right? And accountability is heavy lifting. I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to make it easy. Okay. So first of all, I like to use little diagrams because I don't know about you. If I can have a visual, I'm, it helps me a lot, right? So many of you have heard about the learning styles. There's a uh, uh, visual, you know, if I see it, 
if I hear it, and then if I use my fingers to actually do something, right? So there's kinesthetic. So today you're gonna see it, you're gonna hear my voice, and you're gonna actually do something. So we're gonna touch on all three learning styles. And don't miss that. That is part of forming people. Make sure when you teach them, talk to them, communicate with them, you give them a visual, you tell them so they can hear it, and you give them something to do so they actually start doing or experiencing what you're talking about. Okay, so let's talk about mission and vision. So um, there's some confusion out there in the uh, business world about what the difference is between a mission and a vision. And I am hopefully gonna like make it crystal clear for everybody. A vision is a story, don't miss that, a story about where we wanna be out in the future. We're going to make, don't miss this, a memory of the future. Now, normally we're gonna make a memory of the what? The past. But we, with a vision, are gonna make a memory of the future, meaning that we're gonna tell a story of what it's going to be like when we achieve our vision, okay? So that is a story. Now, here, here is the absolute truth about a vision. It's made up. It, you use your imagination to do it. And you, you want to make it fantastic because if it's not fantastic and super exciting, then nobody's going to really get excited about achieving it. Okay. So when I talk to leaders uh, about putting their vision statement on paper, I want you to tell me an exciting story that takes me up the feeling scale and makes me want to engage with this ideal future. So quickly, I wanna talk about the feeling scale. Now, remember again, we're trying to form employees to get excited and develop so that they help us achieve this big, this big vision. Now, what is required there is good feelings. If people feel good about their work, they work harder. How many of y'all believe that? Go like this so I can see your hands, those of you. Okay, you know, it, it, if you, want people to do good work, they got to feel good, okay? Because there's nothing worse than a curmudgeon employee who's dragging their feet along, getting the minimum done. I don't know if you've ever experienced that, probably not, but you know, the employee who's dragging their feet, not getting stuff done, all right? So on the feeling scale, at the very top of the feeling scale is this feeling called euphoria, euphoria. Now, when's the last time you felt euphoric at work? I want you to think about that for a minute. It's kind of sobering, right? You're like, whoa, euphoric? That's pretty big, Nicole. And I know. It's huge. It's like, we got this big win. Okay? That's, that's where we want to take and form our people. We want them to be feeling so good. Now, here, here's another truth. And this is, this is also sobering. At the bottom of the feeling scale is a feeling called suicidal. And I'm not even joking right here. This is so serious. And if the statistics are correct, you know, if we have 20 people in this call, two people are depressed on this call. If the statistics are correct, one out of 10 are walking around depressed and then one notch below that is suicidal. And so, you know, as leaders, we have to give people something to get excited about. We're not just, you know, selling the RVs or working, you know, that company that just came on a minute ago, we're just not doing technology for tires. We are putting people safely on the road. We are keeping them safe when they travel all the way across America and they are having an experience of their lifetime. And in the meantime, we're earning money and creating a 401k and we're all getting rich. You know, like whatever your vision is going to be, it has to be absolutely exciting and inspiring so that I go up the feeling scale and I feel closer to euphoria. Now, if I feel happy, it's great. If I feel excited, that's fantastic. If I feel fantastic, that's even over, that's even greater. And then euphoria. So we need to be in this place where we're getting people pumped up, right? So the vision has to be fantastic, okay? Now, as we go out to the vision, we're going to articulate that story about what it's like three years from now, 
five years from now. And I used to tell people 10 years, but then, you know, things are changing so quickly. I don't think we can get an accurate, accurate picture of 10 years from today, but I know that we can get close with a three-year vision or a five-year vision, okay? So you go out to the present. Now, I want you to imagine where you are right now that you, you know, I want you to get in your head that I'm standing in the present, okay? I'm in the present moment. I'm listening to Nicole Greer. I'm at the lunch and learn. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to turn and I want you to go out to the future on the lifeline. And when you go out to the future, I want you to go out three years in your brain. And I want you to think about all the things you really, really want to have happen inside of your organization, okay? And there's lots of parts of your organization. There's the people, there's the processes, there's the financials, there's how we operate, there's the culture that apparently you talked about last week. There's all sorts of cool things that we could impact in the next three to five years. So I want you to give yourself permission to let your imagination run wild. It's not going to hurt anything. Let it rip. Okay. Think of the greatest future you can come up with. Now, once you get that in your mind, I want you to think about that day. What's going on that day in your life? You, you, you in this future place, you personally might be promoted to some position. Uh, you might have more locations. You might have 30 more employees. You might be making $200,000 more a year. Whatever it is that you want to have happen, okay? Now, what you do from there is you're gonna turn around from the future and you're gonna go back to the present. You're going to go back to the present. So now we've got a memory of the future out here and we're turning back to the present and we're going to have what's called a retrospective. Now notice it's a retrospective, but I'm going to the past. I'm going back to the present. So I think to myself, if I want to make $200,000 more five years from now, what has to happen? Well, we need to launch this product. We need to buy a competitor. We need to do this. We need to do that. What are the things that you need to do to make that a reality? If you want to get promoted, what do you need to do? I need to get my MBA. I need to go to this school. I need to join this group. I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to take on a project, whatever it is. So now you're starting to think of all the things that make your future possible. And now you're getting what I like to call a to-do list, an action list. And if you'll notice on my little document here I have up on the screen, there are these little A's. So in order to make a ginormous, fantastic, inspiring future happen, you got to do all these little A's. All right. And that's what we're determining in our retrospective. Now, we're all the way back at the present. I have a fantastic future planned out. I've thought about all the things it's going to take to make it happen. And now I'm going to merge those things together. So I got my vision or introspective and I got my retrospective. And now I'm going to create fusion between the two. I mean, this is where, as we say in the RV world, the rubber meets the road. Am I right? So we're going to get those things put together and we're going to start to take action. All right. Now. Let's talk about what a mission statement is. And again, we don't have time for that today, but maybe another day. So mission statements are how we behave on the way to where we're going. A mission statement is how we behave on the way to where we're going. Now, again, forming and deforming employees has a lot to do with behavior. Am I right? Say yes. And so here's the thing. I need to really be clear about what behaviors are going to help us move to the future. And again, we don't have time for that in one hour, but a mission statement is how we behave and a vision is a story of the future. And we have to put in place all the little A's that are going to get us there and communicate them, communicate them again and over communicate them so that people are crystal clear about where we're going and how we're going to get there. So that is our agenda. Okay, now the question is, what is your vision? What is your vision for the future? Now, you might be thinking to yourself, 
I don't know. And, and that often happens when I coach executives and leaders, I say, what's your vision? And they're like, I'm not sure. Okay, well, that's part of the problem. And it's part of the answer is to figure out what is our vision. And so in order to get there, we're going to have to start to articulate it. We're going to have to let it come out of our mouths. Now, a lot of times why people don't have a written down vision is like, there's this thing that we've grown up with. How many of y'all took tests in school? Raise your hand if you took tests in school. I know that's a silly question, but how many of you took tests? Okay, so you took tests in school and then you 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 got an A or you got a B or you got a C. Do y'all remember this? Or maybe a D or an F, dare I say it, but you got a grade. Now, here's the thing. Nobody's going to grade your vision today. We, we're so fine-tuned to like, we have to get it right. We got to get an A and I'm not about getting an A. I'm about getting messy. Okay. That is a total strategy, getting messy. Like sometimes when you're starting to articulate your vision, you're saying, well, we could do this and we could do that. We could do this, that, and the other thing. And it kind of becomes messy. But the more you, you talk about where are we going? What do we want to do? Uh, that, that messiness starts to get less messy. But it should be kind of like, you know, a lot of options and then we zero it in. OK, so I there's no grading for uh, grammar on this. Right. So we want you to just do that. So I want to find out again because a couple of people disappeared. Uh, I want to see who wants to play the repeating question game. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to see maybe if there's somebody who wants to play just with me in the main room since so many people. Um, um, had their camera off. They're probably eating their lunch. So does anybody want to play the repeating question game with me? It takes a very brave soul. You'll have to come off mute and play this game with me. Anybody want to play? I'll play with you. I'm in the car, but I will play with you. Oh, Jessica Ryder. Okay, so do not look at the camera while you're driving your vehicle. Okay, Jessica? All right, everybody, round of applause. Everybody go down to reactions, go down to reactions and give a round of applause for Jessica for, Jessica for coming off of, of her, uh, her camera being off. All right, thank you, Peggy Barthel. I think that's how I say your name. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do, Jessica. I'm gonna ask you the same question over and over and over. And you're going to just be messy and answer my question. And the question is, what is your vision for the future? Okay. So here we go, Jessica. Are you ready? Yep. What, what is your vision for the future? To raise the energy of the world by 1%. All right. Jessica, what is your vision for the future? To get more women into camping. Jessica, what is your vision for the future? To feed my community real food. Jessica, what is your vision for the future? To create a space where my community can come and enjoy one another and get delicious food and movement for their bodies. Jessica, tell me about your vision for the future. To... <laughs> um, to create a, a space for my husband and I that is our sanctuary away from everything. Okay, so I'm gonna stop right there. Now, do you notice how at first it was this grand thing, you know, move the energy of the universe by 1%, which I gotta tell you is so stinking exciting. I can't wait to hear more about that. But then as we asked her the same question, there were different parts of her vision that came to fruition, okay? So if, if we took her vision and we kept, you know, drilling down on it and drilling down on it, and, you know, she was totally focused on these questions in the moment. And we had, you know, kind of that um, energy where she could just let, let completely let it rip. We would begin to write down all the things that she really wants. Now, now here's the thing that I want to encourage you to do uh, as part of this alliance is like, what would it be like if all of you all really got on a call and helped each other articulate this fantastic future and dream it up and get it written down? Okay, it would be magical. All right. So 
So I want you to think about actually doing this work for each other moving forward. Now, I have a vision for my company. And so I'm just going to share it with you real quickly so that you can see kind of what you know, a vision could look like. So it is five years from today. Nicole Greer is a best-selling author and has a team of 10 coaches and trainers that travel all around the globe speaking about the SHINE coaching methodology. This methodology helps people do self-assessment, put proper habits in, work, in place. They are women and men of integrity. I, they understand that having written down next right steps is imperative and they manage their energy. And Nicole has strategies, systems, and smarts in her book and in her training programs that help people manage their intellectual energy, their emotional energy, their spiritual energy, their physical energy, their social energy, and the energy of their money. Nicole is doing work with everybody from top Fortune 50 companies to nonprofits. And so now I'm going to steal this from Jessica, raising the energy by 1% in the universe. Okay, so I just added a new sentence that I'm stealing shamelessly from Jessica, but do you see how exciting that future is? Say yes, the, the three people say yes. Okay, so that's what we're living for. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna share my screen and hold on, I gotta get my PowerPoint cooking again. Let me do that and let me do this. And here we go. All right, so I'm going to go here and I'm gonna share. There it is. All right, here we go, friends. Okay. So we are going to get that articulated vision written down. Now, it's so imperative it's written down um, because there has been science proven that there is connection between your fingertips and your brain when you write it down. Now, it's a different thing from keyboarding, okay? There's something about the writing that makes it really take on some power. So we're gonna go out to the future uh, we're not going to worry about the past. One of the things that I noticed, and I'm bringing this up because I want you to think about this, is that when you articulate a fantastic future, there's always going to be people in your life that want to remind you of your failures. Do you all have any people like that in your lives? Like you'll say, you know what I'm going to do? And then they start telling you how you failed in the past or the company has had a failure in the past. They want to poop on your parade. You know, so be very careful of people who go to the past because here's the thing about the past. It's in the past, okay? And the thing that we wanna focus on is not the past and the people who focus on the past don't ever make anything happen. The people who focus on the future are the ones that make it happen. So don't let them poop on you with the past. Okay, now this is a document that I'm actually gonna go in uh, here right now. I'm gonna go into the chat and um, I, let me ask Monica, do you see the vibrant? You see the vibrant strategy. Don Vargo, if you go into the chat, do you see the vibrant strategy that was uploaded? Do you see that? Give me a thumbs up or a thumbs down. She gave me, oh, she sees it in the chat. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so today, if you're on the call, already in the chat for you is the vibrant strategy PDF and the communicating and executing um, your vision. It's already in the chat for you. So that should be in there. Okay. Now this is a really good document that you're, you can say thank you in the chat if you're, if you're, if you're thankful because somebody gave it to me and now I'm passing it on to my sisters here in the RV Alliance. So this document helps you think through what needs to happen in order for the vision to manifest. Okay, so let's walk through the different parts of this document because this is a working document you can use in your next meeting. Uh, you can use it privately by yourself. So the first thing we want to think Nicole, about- Nicole, I don't um, know that everyone can, I don't think it's in there. People are in the chat are saying that it's not there. Can you upload it again? Oh, okay. Let's fix that. Let's fix it right now. Okay, all right. So I'm going to go in there. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to go here. All right. Isn't it amazing we can do all this now virtually? It's just so cool. Okay. Boom. Okay, it's loading right now. I see it. Okay, Dawn's shaking her head. Joanne's shaking her head. I see it. Okay, perfect. All right, so here's what I want you to think about. Next time you're having your team meeting, 
is you're going to sit down and you're going to say, here's my project, okay, which is my, which is something, a part of my vision or my whole vision, right? So let's say that part of that big vision that you put together that you wrote down um, was that you were going to um, uh, increase sales in the next five years by $100,000, $200,000, whatever it is, you're going to put that in there as your project. Let's say that you were going to um, build a second location, whatever it is that you're going to do as your project, you put that under A, okay? Now, when you do that, you're going to say, this is my goal. I'm going to put this particular thing in place, right? And, and when I put that thing in place, I'm going to get a result. So I'm going to use a personal example of my own because I know where I'm headed, okay? Hopefully you guys know where you're headed and you're gonna have a vision written down. So one of my goals, I'm working on it right now, is this book called Vibrant Leadership, okay? So my goal is to have Vibrant Leadership um, written and have it a New York Times bestseller. Now, where does the New York Times bestseller go? It actually goes over here under E, okay? So under E is my result. So my result is it's a New York Times bestseller. The second result is that this particular book books me for speaking engagements, okay? And then I get high paid speaking engagements across the country. The third result is that this book will earn me, you know, $250,000, right? So we can keep going, right? now. You may be thinking to yourself, are you really going to pull that off? And the answer is, but here's what I know. If I don't pick a target for this book and what it will do in my life, will I get my butt in the chair and write the book? Question mark. If you don't get excited, Nicole, about your future and get these things written down, it's very unlikely that you're going to get in there and really write the book. Okay, so you have to figure out what are the exciting up the feeling scale results that are tangible and measurable that are going to get you where you want to go. So you put all those things in your results. Okay, so now we've got that in there. And I don't want to miss that, you know, C and D has got deadlines, right? So this book needs to be written by July 31st and it's about halfway. So we're about there. Okay, so We've got that. Now, notice that after we get our results, and we're very excited about what this book is going to do, I'm up the feeling scale. Now, instead of going to what are my strategies for writing the book, what I want to do is I want to go down here and I'll say, what are all the things that could get in my way? Okay, so maybe you could come off mute or type it in the chat. What would get in the way of somebody getting their book written? Write it in the chat or come off mute and just say it. What would be the things that get in somebody's way of writing a book? What do you think? Time. Perfect, Dawn. What'd you say? Procrastination. Procrastination. Criticism. Absolutely. Okay. So all of these things. So now what I do with all of these things, I am using this part of my brain that throws up obstacles. So let's talk about our brains for just a moment. So, you know, a lot of times we'll have like, you know what we could do? We could do this big vision, but it's almost like immediately the second part of your brain pops up and goes, that's going to be hard. Have you ever had that little voice in your head that says this is going to be hard? Okay. Instead of ignoring that voice or tapping it down, you want to tap into it right there when we talk about obstacles. So in this case, what we want to do is we go, you know what? Oh my God, am I going to have enough time to write this book? Am I going to procrastinate? What, what if somebody criticizes what I've written and I've spent hours doing it? So I want to put all those things into my obstacles list and I want to be exhaustive. The reason why there are 10 on this obstacle list is you want to uncover every stinking thing that's going to get in the way of you achieving your results and your goal. Okay, so I'm going to put that in there. So if time is an obstacle and I'm worried about it, now I need to use the third part of my brain, the third part of my brain that helps me overcome obstacles, my problem solving, critical thinking brain and I put a strategy in there for time. 
So what is a strategy? Let's run with that one that Dawn put in there. Let's put a strategy in place for time. What would be a strategy for finding time to write a book? What is one thing I could do? Somebody put it in the chat or come off mute. Okay, Monica says schedule time. That's right. So I could say come heck or high water between eight and nine every morning, I'm gonna sit my fanny in a chair with a really nice cup of coffee and I'm going to write. And I'm not getting up for an hour until I have strung some sentences together, okay? That's one strategy. Another strategy might be that I would talk my book into a video or a, um, audio recorder of some type and that I get that translated, right? Uh, there's many, many strategies, but here's what I want to do when I have a big, fantastic, uh, big, audacious, hairy goal, a BHAG, I want to come up with the obstacles and then put the strategies in place. And that is likely to help me get my results. So the number one problem leaders have when they have a big vision is they do not look for obstacles first. They go straight for strategy. Did everybody just get that? Vision and strategy. No. Vision. What can go wrong? Now strategy. Okay. So we're looking to find the things that will get in our way so that our strategies are stronger. All right. So this is how you get your vision in place. Now imagine that you get this all filled in, right? Maybe you do this by yourself first right, for you and your team, and you say, okay, we're going to increase sales by 10%, we're going to have a second location, we're going to improve our customer service scores, whatever it is, you sit down, you put your fanny in the chair, and you fill in every box on here, you will have done this really important thing leaders need to do, which is called thinking, right, strategizing about what needs to happen. Now, you go and you have a meeting with your people. You have a blank one of these in front of everybody. And you say to them, here's the project I wanna do. Here's when we're gonna start. Here's when I wanna have it done, we're on D. You know, and here's the result. What results do you think we'll get from this project? Now, imagine you're sitting there getting buy-in and feedback and input from your team about a major project instead of just saying, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna do X. So everybody get busy. Instead, you have them feed into the process. They talk about the results. They go up the feeling scale. They start to get excited. And you say to them, what's going to get in our way? Because I'll tell you what employees do not like. They do not like a new project, a new process, a new strategy without somebody saying this is going to be challenging. You know, that people walk away from the meeting with the leader where there's going to be a new strategy put in place. And they're like, do they realize how hard this is going to be? If you start with this and you say, here, what are all the things that are going to get in our way, guys? And they say this, 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 this. And then you ask your team to give their genius, oh, well, I know how we could get over that obstacle. We, we could do this. Now you've got your team helping you articulate the strategies to overcome the issues that they know they're going to face. And it's all out in the open and not just, you know, this whole idea of it's going to be great to get it done. Get buy-in. That's exactly right. Okay. So this is the number one tool I'm putting in your toolbox today, uh, vibrant strategy. So I implore you to use this with your team to get the vision in place. Now, once you get the vision in place, here's what I want you to think about. I want you to think about holding people accountable. Okay. Now, across the bottom are all these light bulbs. And, um, you know, the name of my company is Vibrant, uh, which just means people are lit up, excited, and want to do the work that we have in front of us. <laughs> you know, like, uh, how many of y'all like to work with people who like to get stuff done? How many of y'all like to work with those people? How many like to work with people who don't like to get stuff done? I don't like working with those people. So, you know, what we have to do is we have to get people excited about the work at hand. And across the bottom are all the things that we need to do as leaders. We need to set goals. We need to educate our people. We need to make sure we understand what everybody's abilities are, that they're on a growth plan, that, you know, success is in their mind and what a, you know, a new, a new place is. We're going to help them with their career, blah, blah, blah. Now, here's what I know. If I think back in my life about the human beings that I 
treasured in my life in terms of my career, I can come up with like two names, okay? And I'm 54 years old. I can think of two names of humans along my path. Remember our little lifeline? I said the past, the present, the future. If I go to the past and I think, who really formed me? I can only come up with two people who really cared. Isn't that sad in 54 years? Okay, first person was Nancy Freeman. So I'm gonna tell you a quick story about Nancy Freeman. Uh, my, my past, I used to be in the restaurant business and then I got, I got, I was actually waiting on tables and, uh, Nancy Freeman was my guest at my table and she handed me her business card and she said, you got a lot of energy. I said, I know. And she, <laughs> she said, I'm in property management. Would you be interested in finding out about a career leasing and managing apartment communities? And I was like, sure. She handed me a card and I went to go work for Nancy Freeman. So I worked uh, inside the company for about three or four years, and I was a leasing agent. I was really, I loved that work. I was a salesperson, and then they promoted me to manager, and I knew nothing, nothing about managing a P&L or how financing worked or how my property was financed, none of that stuff. I knew none of it. Nancy Freeman, after I'd been in the company three years, she calls me up. She says, you just got promoted. I'm coming to your office on Monday. And I said, oh, okay. And she said, I'm going to help you because I know you don't have the business acumen, Nicole, to do this job, but they promoted you because of your energy and your excitement about stuff. And I said, okay. So she comes to my office and takes me line item through line item through line item of my budget. She explains to me return on investment. She teaches me return on assets. She gives me an MBA like in three Monday mornings. I'm so, so grateful to her. Now, the other thing was, she said, I'm going to hold you accountable for improving the financial position of this property. And I said, okay. And so she helped every week, she would call in and check on my numbers and see if I understood them. Okay. Now, some people might call that micromanaging. Uh, you know, this manager that comes into your life and wants all this stuff from you all the time. But to me, she was one of the best leaders I ever have. She formed me. She shaped me. She, she put pressure on me to make me a beautiful manager. And I ended up doing fantastic. But without her, I would have probably failed epically. Okay. So, so here's what I want you to think about. Holding people accountable. Now, Nancy Freeman tells me this. She says, uh, Nicole, holding people accountable is hard work. And, and you need to ask people three questions. This is, this is my accountability formula uh, to, to make sure people, I know what they're going to do and that they know I'm going to follow up. But she said, this is not micromanaging. This, this is accountability. So I want you to think about the last time that you communicated with your people, you know, like, this is what I need you to do in order to make this vision happen. Like, don't forget everything we communicate. Like, why are we doing this little teeny tiny A action step? Because that A plus this A plus that A plus that A equals the big vision. Like that, that's why we have to draw that little picture out. And I'll, I'll make sure before we get out of here, I'll, I'll upload my PowerPoint slides. So, Let's say one of the strategies back on our vibrant strategy was to um, put together an Excel spreadsheet of our competitors. I'm just making that up. And so I say, Monica, I want you to put together a survey, a market survey of our competitors in the RV industry in the Northwest corner of the United States. And she says, okay, I'll do it you know how Monica is she just does whatever you ask her she's really sweet and so the minute she says no problem I'll do it and I let her walk away I have failed I have failed as a leader because do I really have a complete clear idea or have I set expectations with Monica say no okay now I'm going to go down a little bunny trail on expectations but y'all are in an advanced group I can tell so then I'll come back but uh, another guy in my life who was a great mentor, his name was Don Carroll, okay? 
And one day I was complaining, which is not a very good activity, but I was complaining to Don Carroll about somebody on my team. And he says to me, sounds like you're the problem. I was like, what? And he says, yeah, you're the problem, Nicole. And I said, what? what? He says, doesn't sound like you set very good expectations. And I said, oh, okay, well, talk about that, Don Carroll. And this is what he said. You, you might want to write this down. It's so good. We're recording this. I'm write it down. Okay, here it is. Uncommunicated expectations are a premeditated opportunity to be disappointed. Did y'all catch that? Uncommunicated expectations are a premeditated opportunity to be disappointed. So he said, it doesn't sound like you actually told them what you wanted very clearly. And now you're mad because they can't read your mind. So that was the second thing he said. But anyways, so, so here's the thing. If I tell Monica to do this market survey, after she agrees, I ask her this, what are you going to do? Now, here's the thing. Monica and I trust each other already. So see, this is the important part. We already trust each other. And she says, Nicole, I'll handle it. Don't worry. But, but I can't let her walk away. I say, well, I know you are fantastic at your job, Monica. Just share with me kind of what you're going to do to get started. And she says, well, I think that I'm going to call so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so. I think there are competitors. And I say, oh, but please add so-and-so and so-and-so. And she goes, oh, that's a good idea. Notice how two brains are better than one. And so I say, you know, let's do these seven competitors. And she's like, okay, great. And I say, and then what questions do you think you'll ask them? You know, we're getting really clear on what she's going to do. So we're setting expectations. And she walks away probably because she knows I want to form her and not let her go off and not do it right and deform her that she's like, oh, I feel really good about this, Nicole, I got it. Now, second question I have to ask her is, when are you going to do it? And so she said, I'll get it done really soon. Okay, so soon, that could be today, it could be a month from now, I really don't know. So I need to say, um, I'm thinking I would like it done if right, soon is good for you. So I, soon to me is next Friday, like at lunch, you think you could get it to me next Friday by lunch? She's like, oh, absolutely. I said, okay, great, great. Okay, so now I literally, I'm gonna go into my calendar and mark that Monica's gonna deliver this market survey. Now you're thinking, you're gonna go under calendar? Yes, because is this part of my vision? Say yes. So I'm keeping track of all little A's that need to be created to create my big vision. So that's when she's gonna do it. Now, the third question I ask her is, how will I know it's done? And a lot of senior people, you know, people are doing stuff and you don't even know it's getting done. It's so, it, it, I'm gonna tell you what happens. If Monica sends me an email at noon with the market survey attached, you know what's gonna happen to me in my physical body? I'm gonna get a little drop of, of uh, serotonin drip out of my hypothalamus gland and go in here and marinate my entire body. I'm gonna feel so good. When I get this from her, because I'm one step closer to my vision, don't miss that. And when she sends it to me, at the time she tells me she's going to, I'm going to take a skinny second and I'm going to say, Monica, you put together the market survey in a way that is easy to understand and you did it on time. And therefore, the impact you're having on the vision is that you are actually making it come true. And I want you to know, I am so glad you're on my team. And she's going to read that and go, Nicole loves me. Okay. Now, what's going to happen to her body? She's going to get a little drip of serotonin, come out of her hypothalamus gland, go all in her body and make her feel great. Even harder this afternoon because she feels loved. Okay. So that's the accountability formula. But I'm going to tell you, there is such a negativity out there about micromanaging. That is not micromanaging. That is accountability. So I, I, you know, I really want to encourage you to do that. Okay. And that's how we communicate with our team. All right. Now, you have probably seen 
uh, this model before, uh, but you know, in terms of like, how do we get a big vision done is, is that we have to have really conscious, competent people at least, you know, to make this vision happen. And so um, we want to think about when we create the vision, what kind of humans is it going to take to make that happen? Okay. So I'll, I'll give you an example of a team I'm working with right now. We just put out a brand new uh, software that is replacing a software system that's been in place for 15 years. So um, I want you to think about like, I mean, it's ridiculous. It's like thousands of people who have been using one software have to switch to another just think about how fun that is. Okay, so really when we're doing this work and we're training people, um, currently um, they are, uh, you know, as we're taking them through the training of this, they are unconsciously incompetent. Like they don't know how much they don't know, right? Now we get them into training class and now they're like, oh my God, I didn't realize this was gonna be so much change. So now they're conscious of how much they don't know. Okay, and this is when people are scared to death. Okay, the third level is when you keep holding them, informing them, and communicating the change to them, and putting them in training scenarios, and sending them emails and text messages and things about the change that's coming. They gain a conscious competence. They start to feel good about it because we're forming you, forming you, forming you to feel great about this change. And eventually, when they sit down at the computer to use the new software, it will just be like the old software. They just do it without thinking. You know how you drive the car to work and you didn't even pay attention to where you were going, but you got to work? It's the same thing. So as we're forming people, it, in that stage two and three is where people go through a learning curve, okay? And, and at any time you have a big, big vision, people are gonna to have to learn something new. They're gonna to have to experience something new and they will go through these four parts of the performance model. So back to my story about when I was an apartment manager, you know, I was a leasing agent. I was a very good leasing agent. I knew the sales process. I did not understand managing this, you know, million dollar asset or whatever. And so the day I became the manager, Nancy Freeman told me, you don't know how much you don't know, sister. And I was like, oh my God, I don't know. And then she worked with me, she worked with me, she worked with me. She got right there with me and made me consciously competent, held me accountable. And then I ran apartment communities for 14 more years and loved it and had a fantastic time and very successful because I love to work, okay? So, um, all right, so let's see, somebody put a comment here. I think asking instead of telling, I want it next Friday. Yes, I agree, I agree. It, it is a conversation, uh, Peggy. You know, it's not like, get it done by Friday. That's not what I meant. What I meant was like, like, could, could I have it by Friday at noon? You know, and then of course, because Monica and I have trust, she could have said, oh, I'm off next Friday. And then I would say, okay, have Monday or how about next Tuesday? I mean, we would negotiate because we have love and trust because we, I, she knows I'm forming her and, um, and asking them when they will do it. Oh, I got you. Yeah, we're on the same page, I think, Peggy. We're good, all right. So, uh, so I wanna talk about humans just for a moment because this is about um, taking this human being and forming them. So, so I don't know if you've ever seen a diagram like this before, but uh, this is a picture of a human. I know it doesn't look like a human, uh, but every human that you work with inside of them they have this little spark, okay? And, and if you fan that, that spark, you get a flame, right? And then you start to have people who go out into your organization and shed light on what could be better, right? So you probably have two types of people you work with. Again, the people who don't like to work, the people who love to work. But the, the people who love to work, they are lit. From within, right? Meaning that um, they've been connected to this work like internally, you know, like they're excited about it. Now, as a leader, how do I form them even faster so that I can get them to shine brighter, to work harder, to do more? Okay. 
Uh, and the thing that we need to understand about the people that work with us is that they have human traits. They have different personalities. So I'm wondering, um, Monica, I'm looking at you right now. Did you guys, have you guys ever talked about personality in one of these Lunch and Learns before? Have you guys ever done that one? Done yeah, personality? we did have someone do a personality test. Yeah, what, which got, which one was it? it? I think it was, I think it was, was kind it of Earth? one of their own. Or was it, okay. yeah, it wasn't like a, a regular one. I felt like it was a little bit like disc, disc-like. Okay, so let's talk about disc. That's a good one. So, so if you're not doing personality assessment with your people, you absolutely have to do that, okay? Uh, or one of the others. So there's disc, there's pep, there's Myers-Briggs. I mean, the list is a mile long, okay? But as a leader, you do need to do that because at the heart of every human is a way they are hardwired, okay? Now, each person, let's just use the disc, the D, the I, the S, and the C, they all look at the vision differently, okay? The D looks at it like, how could I drive part of it? They want some control over what's going to happen. So these people, you have to talk to them the vision about how they're going to have some control, how they're going to drive part of it, okay? Then there's the I, the person that is inspirational, the fun-loving type, that's me. And so the I, you've got to tell them that story of the future. They're the one most interested in the story of the future. The D and the I love that, okay? Now the C is somebody who is more conscientious, more about the process, more about the procedure. When you pull out that vibrant strategy and you lay out all the obstacles, that conscientious C in the personality is going to flip out with excitement, but they never show it. But on the inside, they're so excited. We're looking at what's wrong and we're gonna use critical thinking to get it going the right direction. And then the S, who is somebody who is stability, somebody who's a little bit more go with the flow, the servant leaders inside of your organization, Again, when they see the safety of the laid out strategy, they're gonna be so turned on and excited, okay? So understanding what part of the communication and what tools help them see the future is absolutely important. Now, the other thing is, is that everybody on your team has a belief system, okay? Now, we, we could spend a whole session on this, but the belief system that you have inside your organization is imperative. And, and you have to believe as the leader that the vision is indeed possible. People are going to try to talk you out of great things. I don't know why humans do that to each other. I'm gonna tell you a quick story. I decided, I, I never got my college degree, okay? When I was 48 years old, I decided to go get my college degree. And do you know what everybody told me when I would tell them? They didn't say, that's a fantastic idea, Nicole, go for it. You know do you see that why do we do that i don't understand so anyways now i have my master's but the point of it is not that i have my master's but that like i believed i needed to do that to learn and to have that credibility right and so we have to be sold out and not listen to the naysayers out here as leaders that we can achieve this big vision because if you don't have it for yourself, other people will let you kind of be helpless, right? And the other thing is, is once we have beliefs in place, we have to have the proper thinking. And that's why the vibrant strategy is so, so, so very important to get us moving forward. And that's when the whole organization moves into the learning zone. When we understand each other's personality, we know what we believe about the future and we have really great thinking, right? We've got our strategy written down we can go out into the learning zone and achieve the vision. All right, it is one o'clock. It is one o'clock and we do try to keep these. I know a lot of people have um, other commitments. This is so great. Um, I hate to <laughs> point out the time. Um, so yeah, is there any, are we at an okay stopping point? Yeah, absolutely. We're at the end, we're good. Oh, perfect. Um, okay, I wanna thank yep. Nicole for being here and we do have these resources and we will share them on the website when we post the recording. So I hope everyone has found this to be really insightful and really helpful. I know I did. Um, and so thank you all for joining us and thank you again, Nicole, for your, your fabulous insight and um, ideas on how to, to get that, 
to that vision. And thanks to Jessica, if you're still on, for, for playing the game because you were really yeah. put on the spot and, and really appreciate that. Um, and of course, thank you to TST sponsors. So happy Friday. Hope everyone has a really great weekend.